What happens when you do everything right? When you change your mindset and your approach to life and you really look after yourself. That is what Paul Shepard and I are examining today. Paul is one of the UK's top mindset coaches. His content is absolutely brilliant. If you follow him on Instagram, you'll already know how good he is. And today we're looking specifically at the intersection between mindset and health. And then especially we talk about anxiety and Paul's own journey with anxiety and how that led him to becoming a mindset coach. Because often those of us who work in this sort of health and mindset space, we do so because we needed it ourselves. This is Zestology then. It's the podcast all about health, biohacking and mindset. I am your host, Tony Wrighton. I've come for a little walk in Portugal and uh, I know it's still February, so I don't want to make you too jealous, but oh, I'm going to have to then. I'm just wearing a t-shirt. It's about 19 degrees. I have got factor 50 on and that is because I got burnt on the beach last weekend. I know it's bonkers, isn't it? Um, but this is why we live here for days like this. And so it's absolutely lovely to come out and record a podcast intro and get some sun at the same time. It's got to be done. I am at the moment, it's, it's quite hard to motivate yourself to work when the weather's nice, which you probably know wherever you are in the world. And I'm at the moment trialing, doing quite a bit of my work while I'm out and about. So almost like hiking. So I've just come out for about a 45 minute walk, an hour walk, and I've been replying to some WhatsApps and I've been looking at my Trello board and I've been recording some podcast intros. It's sort of work. It's not the real deep important stuff, but it'll do. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying anyway. But uh, anyway, let's get onto this uh, podcast interview because that's enough of me blathering uh, on about how I'm in Portugal. Paul Shepard is my new best friend and I think you're gonna <laughs> enjoy his company as well on Zestology, here he is. Okay, very excited to welcome Paul Shepard to the show. We've got a fantastic show lined up. Paul, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Nice to be here with you on your show. Likewise, really good to have you here. And I came on your show fairly recently. And I think it's fair to say the word unexpected, actually. I enjoyed it. I mean, I was I was looking forward to it anyway. Yeah. But I enjoyed it so much. And then we natted for ages after the end <laughs> of our recording, didn't we? We did. So it sort of, sort of got really well, and I couldn't wait to introduce my listeners on this podcast because I know you're interested in not just the mindset aspects of what I talk about, but also the health and the biohacking stuff as well, aren't we? I am um, biohacked up. I've got my aura ring on. I've got my whoop on. Uh, I like to know all the stats. I want to know what's going on with my mind and body. And I love the accountability that can come from it if you hold it loosely because – yeah. Stats are a bit different in places and you just get a general sense I find quite useful. Yeah. Well, you just went skiing. How was your heart rate variability while you were skiing? Uh, really good, actually. My recovery on my whoop was apparently, because I was worried, you know, because you're skiing, what, 30 to 40 kilometers a day, right? Mm. So I was worried that I would, <laughs> my heart rate variability was just going to plummet through the week and just say, what are you doing? And uh, actually, because I did quite good recovery in the afternoons and in the evenings, it's very relaxed. I don't drink alcohol or anything like that. So my sleep was on point. Um, I recovered well enough to uh, ski the next day and my heart rate variability stayed in a good place. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. And there's something about all those lovely views of mountains, the fresh air, that's got to be good for it as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Some, some of the chairlifts that we went on, it was so silent. You know, oh. even our even our instructor was like, it's so peaceful, isn't it? You know, that was the only sound we could hear. And it was, yeah, it was just absolutely awesome. And you get a real good feeling of gratitude in that moment as well. Yeah. When you're just sat there surrounded by beauty. I think the brain really responds to this and it just begins to calm down. I think the ego becomes a little bit more, you know, silent and yeah. you can enjoy the moment. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, um, I'm always happy to have somebody on this podcast who measures their heart rate variability with two different devices and you've got a whoop and an aura ring. So that's an excellent sign. Well, I also measure it, right? So I've, I've teamed up with an app called 59 breaths. I don't know if right. you've heard of it. No. All right. So I love this app and it's a 10 minute breathing app, which, um, it's goal is one of its goals is to increase your HRV, um, through breath work. 
and you can see it, it does it measures the swings and beats in between each heartbeat and you get a sense of it changing through breath work and that, i really like that as well so i'm kind of watching it on all different sort of platforms just to see what happens <laughs> You're an HRV trader. You got like fifteen I, screens. I'm addicted. Yeah, it's but at my age, I'm in my fifties, right? And um, I'm an athlete. I train for a lot of things. Um, mm. And your HRV, if it's in a really good place mm. before a race or competition, you are on fire. But if it's not because you've had poor sleep or you've been drinking alcohol or um, you've not yeah. recovered properly from exercise. Your performance on the day is poor. And I think that goes for life as well. If your HRV is in a, isn't in a great place, uh, you know that when it's been, when you've been sick, it's it's really quite low. You just that, a lack of energy and mental uh, sharpness just isn't there. Well, that's funny you should say that, actually, because I, I think I told you I've, I've been a little bit sick recently and I'm always so tough on myself when I'm sick because I basically do a podcast about health and energy. <laughs> um, but the HRV stats have been dreadful. And then when I'm doing things that require a lot of cognition and a lot of um, mental clarity, like, for example, learning Portuguese, I am so bad at talking Portuguese. I can't think of two words. And then I realized I was in the bread shop the other day and they were actually laughing at me for my Portuguese. <laughs> well, I guess you're bringing a memorable moment to your bakery. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think basically what happened was I ordered a coffee in the bakery and they said, do you want it to have here or to take away? And I pointed out of the window and I said, I'd like it to have here, please. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, so I just got the words all wrong. And then I, I realized that they were saying in Portuguese, he said he wanted it here, but he was pointing out the window. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, I heard this thing that learning a language is basically being willing to make a fool of yourself all the time. And that is essentially what it is, yeah. getting outside your comfort zone. But ultimately, the rewards of it are brilliant as well. Well, I heard about the, um, I can't speak another language, Uh I remember bits and pieces from school, but the the science around the you know neuroplasticity and how the brain forms new neural networks from learning a language is incredible. Yeah, it's something that I'd recommend um, if if anyone is you know interested in that side of things. Uh, for me, I don't know if I'd get around to it because I've got a lot going on. But maybe one day I'll be learning. Uh, if I come to visit you in Portugal, maybe we'll have to gen up on the language a little. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's the perfect time to do it. When you're here, we'll we'll learn three words a day. <laughs> and that's basically like coffee, in here, wine, or whatever else you need. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I'm saying that. I don't actually drink wine myself. But <laughs> um, but anyway, Paul, I one of the reasons I was sort of so excited to make friends with you is because you're not only into mindset, but you're sort of into mindset and health as well. And in my experience, most of the people in this mindset world are now and when i started learning nlp i was oh, yeah. so fascinated at sort of how it could increase performance and especially how it could relate to sort of sports performance for example but over the years as i've focused on health more i've realized how the two sort of mesh in so well together um and i'm and i and i see in you someone who really considers that a lot as well well um there's a couple of things i got into nlp trying to cure anxiety <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what can I find that will cure anxiety? Because I had an anxiety disorder back then. Um, but also, when you begin to utilize, when you think about the ultimate mindset or how can you create the level of success or wealth that you want, then you're really going to have to learn to focus on how are you perceiving things? Mm. You know, what's your modalities? Well, how is, you know, what is your map of the, of the, of the world? How are you seeing it? And if you, if you get an idea of, okay, that's how I see things, that's how I experience it, but there's elements of this that's not quite working, then NLP allows, well, creates that, helps you create that change in regards to creating those little tweaks that can um, have a, you know, create a change in your experience of reality. So, and that's, and I use NLP quite a lot within my work. Not only has it really helped me, and I don't have an anxiety disorder anymore. I mean, it wasn't the main cure, but it, it was it was very helpful. Um but it also helps me in my work and helping coach other people to to be more effective, to create the level of happiness and success that they want, just by knowing what's going on in their minds. I absolutely love the content that you put out, and I watch all your videos. Uh, thank um, you. What, yeah, what is your background apart from NLP then? How did you end up doing this? Because I'm always, you know, when someone's sort of helping other people 
how to think better. There's a story yeah. there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have got into this if I hadn't had an anxiety disorder, as I mentioned. It was, um, you know, from bullying, um, worrying about sexuality. It was really poor lifestyle choices. There are all sorts of things compounding into a poor teenager going into his 20s, just terrified of having panic attacks every day. Um, social anxiety, travel anxiety, uh, all sorts of issues going on. And I went down a traditional route, and of course the doctor was like, okay, here's a here's a, here's a a page with five questions on it, if you just fill this in, which I did, and it was like, okay, here's some drugs. Oh, and uh, I was like, oh, um, <laughs> I'm too frightened to take these, to be honest. I've read yeah. you know, horror stories about the side effects, et cetera. Yeah. Um, no one asked me about what was going on in my life. No one asked me about what was um, going on in my uh you know, in, in my lifestyle, no one asked me about my drinking habits. No one asked me about anything. So I went to a therapist, obviously. I was going to a therapy as well. All they did was focus on, well, how are you thinking? What are you thinking? And what's happened in your past? And apparently, if you understand your anxiety, then it magically go away. That was kind of the impression I was given. Yeah. And that didn't work either. So I started training in counseling. Um I started looking at all sorts of therapies in regards to trying to help myself. And again, I, you know, I had what was known as an awakening experience, an anxiety awakening experience, where it got me to the point where one day I thought, actually, nothing's working. And I'm just tired. I can't, con I can't continue. Mm. And so that was a moment of, should I just end my life? And I'm 20. I can't see a future without anxiety. Mm. And in that moment, it was the weirdest thing. It was this shift of energy that just flew through me, Tony. It's it this bizarre thing. And this voice just spoke through every fiber of my being. And A, before anyone thinks, there's nothing mystical. Uh, we all have this innate intelligence within us. Um, and sometimes a crisis can really access it. Mm -hmm. So here was my crisis. And it said very clearly, you are overthinking your anxiety. You're lost in your head. And you need to come out of your head and into your body. And then it was like gone. So, mm, wow. Yeah, right. And I, I mean, I was sat there thinking, what the, what the hell was that? Also kind of secretly pleased that there was a, a bit of direction now, even though I had no idea what it meant. Um, it was, and it, you know, I began to explore from there. Hang on a sec. What is going into the body, you know, so I looked at the physiology of anxiety and realized I had so much wrong about anxiety. I was breathing wrongly. I wasn't, I wasn't taking my bedtime seriously. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't doing all the basics that would really help with something like um, heart rate variability. I wasn't doing anything at all that would take pressure off of my poor nervous system to help it calm down. Mm. And that's what led me training through the years in NLP and various therapies, eventually training in becoming a coach, which is what I prefer. Um, and that's led me to where I am now. And I help people all over the world with not only um, their limiting beliefs around their mindsets, but also with anxiety. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah, great. And um, so once you started doing that training, obviously some people just use pure NLP and you obviously did the training in NLP. But what other trainings did you do as well alongside oh, that? Yeah, so um, I trained as a hypnotist, so hypnotherapy. Yeah. Um, and I think really? I was kind of sold the idea that that would also be this like magical cure and that you would be able to do this for other people as well. Yeah. And whilst it is really useful, yeah. and I do believe that if you get the subconscious mind on board with anything that you want to change, then you can become unstoppable. There are other things involved which really help hypnotherapy work mm. um okay, there's no point me hypnotizing you to get rid of anxiety for example if you're chugging caffeine <laughs> at 10 o'clock yeah. at night and wondering why yeah. you can't sleep yeah. those sorts of things have to be addressed mm. so i created a holistic program from that i also trained in um integral eye movement therapy wow which is absolutely yeah it's uh, absolutely fascinating but your eyes look in certain directions to access certain memories mm. that can be traumatic memories 
And then with integral light movement therapy, you're getting the eyes to move in various directions whilst getting people to focus on the memory. Wow. And then what tends to happen is people really struggle to recall the trauma afterwards. It's almost like the trauma's become a bit of a ghost. Right. Yes. It's, uh, it's very, very handy. I mean, that's like the NLP sort of fast phobia cure. You're almost sort of scrambling, yeah. scrambling yeah. the memory and the, yeah. sort of the, the associations that go on in the body at the same time. Absolutely. But it's, it's, it's so simple to do, just to begin to do a little bit of eye movement with someone um, and then begin to see how they do. The, the integral eye movement bit is where the eye does a little jiggle when it's, oh. when, you act, when it's accessing the trauma. And then when you see that smooth over and the eyes are smoothly moving from left to right or mm. um, you know, up and down, um, you can tell that there's something that's been a change. And all you've got to do is ask the client. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, um, I can't think of that thing. That was a 10 on the anxiety scale now. It's yeah. now about a four or five. And then you can repeat until it's like, well, actually, this isn't really having much of an impact on me at all. And you wow. then you, you can repeat it on like core memories um, and issues which are vibrating through time mm. to create reactions here in the present day. Do you know if you're getting enough magnesium? Because four out of five people aren't. Interrupting the podcast for one moment to say, this is a big problem because magnesium is involved in more than 300 biochemical reactions in your body. And right now, I want to talk to you about the most common signs to look out for that could indicate your magnesium deficient. So are you irritable or anxious? Do you struggle with insomnia? Do you experience muscle cramps or twitches? Do you have high blood pressure? Are you sometimes constipated? There are loads of other symptoms, but those are just a few questions. And here's what most people don't know. Taking any magnesium supplement won't solve your problem. I've been trying out a few new electrolyte brands recently, and frankly, I've been shocked at how many of them use really suboptimal types of magnesium. That is why, in terms of magnesium, I exclusively recommend Magnesium Breakthrough. It's the only full-spectrum magnesium supplement with seven unique forms of magnesium that your body can actually use and absorb. If you go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology and use the code Zestology10, you can get gifts with your purchase this month, up to two travel size bottles of magnesium breakthrough. So you can take it with you on your travels as well, especially if you go somewhere hot later on this year. So if you go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology. This is a limited time offer. Use that code Zestology10. That works all over the world. Works on the UK site as well, which is bioptimizers.co.uk. Remember to use that code Zestology10. And uh, remember, it is really important to make sure you're getting enough magnesium, but magnesium that you can actually absorb. That's it. Back to the show. And so going back 30 years to when you had that sort of that moment, that awakening. And a part yeah. of that was getting out of your head and into your body, which yeah. was in some way was a realization ahead of its time, because I feel like that is something that more than ever, so many of us need now and all the time because of the way we live our lives now. Absolutely. And the trap, and it is an ego trap. We've been conditioned into believing that we can solve everything through thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll find that magical thought. We'll find that magical solution that will suddenly make us feel calm and make us feel relaxed. Yeah. And the reality is, if you come down and soothe the body first, mm. this is why breath work is so important, beginning to and, and working to um, regulate your nervous system, if you calm it down first, because this is where we feel the alarm in the body when we're anxious. The mind begins to calm down. Your prefrontal cortex has much more in the way of control. Your limbic system, your emotional survival brain begins to retreat. Mm. Um, and we can think really clearly. But what we have a tendency to do is overfocus on um, thoughts and what can we do to think? What can we think to try and change our situation? Yeah. And uh, again, so I coach people into coming back into the body and that all came from that awakening experience, that wow. insight. Yeah, it's one of the great paradoxes of this podcast that I focus on health, biohacking, and mindset. Mm. And actually, I think that often biohacking is sort of very type A problem solving. Right, what else can I do to make things better? What can I? What supplements can I do to make this anxiety better? And yeah. nearly always, it's 
less about the biohacking to solve the problem and more about the mindset and the nervous system as you just talked about but yeah. that can be a, a, a difficult sell for people because ultimately they want the new whoop band they don't want to close their eyes for 10 minutes and do nothing <laughs> well that's the ego the ego will do anything not to just simply relax for, and be quiet for a while the ego loves the drama it mm. loves to struggle and it's not it's not the ego isn't the enemy you know it's not the enemy um the ego has been conditioned to behave that way. So I teach meditation and it's amazing how many people say I can't meditate. Not before long, we are meditating and it's nice because yeah. um, they know what to do with the ego in those sorts of circumstances. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right because it, but, you know we want the quick fix. Of course we mm. want the quick, quick fix, but the quick fix is the equivalent of if you think of an anxiety as an alarm sounding off like a fire alarm mm. well you can turn off the fire alarm and you can turn it down but if the fire is still there yeah what's causing the anxiety that remains unaddressed right so you can biohack it you could do it oh no all these wonderful hacks i've done hacks on on video and you know and they're very popular but they are ways of turning down the alarm and that can be a good thing Mm. as long as you address the root cause. It's really hard to address the root cause if the alarm is sounding too loud. Yeah. Is it ego or is it just a sort of adrenal response? Um, if you're sort of constantly getting jacked up through something that is mildly addictive, like, for example, um, checking your WhatsApp messages or seeing how many books you've sold on Amazon or whatever it might be, that's there's a sort of a massive dopamine spike there. There's a massive dopamine spike, but also you you've, you've have from probably previous behaviors began to form pathways repeat you know that have become reinforced mm. from enjoying that being overly stimulated so i was addicted to anxiety mm. you know i self i sabotaged even my own healing process because being calm and peaceful at the time felt way too alien yeah and i enjoyed the drama i enjoyed uh, being hyper vigilant i enjoyed being yeah. overly busy and on the go and i had to undo all of that to begin to um appreciate and devalue all of that so that i could become calmer and more peaceful so again high functioning anxiety is a term I think some people might recognize that where, you know, if even sitting still is quite difficult because those pathways are so strong, they're like, they're saying, we need to be doing something. Yeah. Let's have something overly stimulating, yeah. which of course is yeah. going to have a huge impact on what you were talking about at the beginning, your HRV. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, so with the HRV, I was really fascinated with what you said um, when you've been working with those sportsmen and, or, or sorry, in, in terms of like uh, ath athletes. Mm, yeah. Um, and when the HRV is good, it tends to be that an athlete performs better. Yeah. And is that something that, that because sort of, you know, uh, HRV can sometimes ebb and flow over a period of months, as I know, yeah. having tracked my own for many years. Um, so I'm really fascinated by that. Well, it's it's not... It, it's you look at any performance if the if your if your heart is struggling and you don't have energy then what is your day going to be like mm, mm. you know so my hiv is in a good place i've checked it today <laughs> three different places yeah. right so i checked it today um i am doing uh training for something called high rocks this evening uh wow. and it will be it will be quite intense i know that yeah. judging by the messages on the group so right i am looking at this going this is going to be hard it would be much harder if my HRV was really, really struggling. And if it was struggling too much, the reality is I shouldn't go to tonight. I should avoid it. Yeah. And so by knowing my HRV, I have much more in the way of rest days than what I used to love. I love exercising. So, um, you know, it's quite easy to go, oh, do you know what? It's not going to hurt if I go tomorrow as well, is it? Um, yeah. But if you see your stats plummet, you're like, oh, actually, do you know what? I think I need a, you know, and the the, the whoop band and the aura ring and other things. They all say, you should you should be taking a break. Yeah, yeah. And it's good to listen to. It's good yeah. to listen to and yeah. do something else like yoga or do something gentle instead instead for yourself. Yeah, it's quite nice sometimes if you feel like you haven't slept very well and you feel a bit oh, feel a bit meh, and then you check your stats. You're like, oh, actually, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you you can sometimes. Then yeah. my aura ring last night decided that I was going to bed at half seven last night. It must have been because I was really relaxing. Wow. Um, and then 
sort of chastised me for saying, well, you didn't sleep that brilliantly until you actually went to bed. So I got poor stats this morning, so they need to sort that out. <laughs> oh, so frustrating. I'm like, what? Um, I've, I didn't go to bed half seven. What's that about? <laughs> yeah. You can change the time in which you go to bed on the order ring. I'll have to look at that. Well, how do, you know, I'll have to message you afterwards and get this. Yeah, details. you get you get a slider and you slide it along. But right. you can't change the time you woke up, which is very irritating. All right. Um, and then in terms of, is that the sort of thing that you work with most clients on now? I mean, when people approach you now, obviously you've got this huge following on Instagram. People love the content that you're putting out there. Is it mostly about anxiety? Is it about high performance? Is it athletes? What do people come to you for now? Yeah. So my biggest um, set of clients are in the States. They love this stuff. Uh, I think yeah. in the UK, we're getting better at it. Uh, a lot of people are still quite hesitant to invest in themselves, which is, mm. you know, it'll get there, it'll get there. But in the States, um, yeah, so some of them do have um, limiting beliefs and blocks to, you know, like self-sabotage, imposter syndrome, all sorts mm. of things that I love. Um, and yeah, elements of anxiety. And they they know that they want to achieve, you know, X, Y, and Z in its a real, you know, it's going to be a 10x leveling up. Yeah. And they want the coaching, challenging, and support to actually get there. Mm. Because I have a unique approach um, with the way that I work with people due to a, a quite a hefty toolkit, then yeah. they get that support and challenge. We get to really just really quite quickly begin to disintegrate those limiting beliefs and mm. create experiments for people to prove that they're no longer being held back by that belief. Mm. And then work with what evidence there is left, and we, we keep modifying on that. So yeah, people work with me for like three months, six months um, on deep, intensive uh, things that they want to uh, achieve, and it could be in all areas of their life. It's not usually just a work thing. It, it, relationships sometimes come into this. Um, just becoming more centered and more focused, breaking through the illusions of their mind. You know, we all get yeah. pulled into that dream state of believing stories that we tell about ourselves. And about other people. And I love breaking through those because they are lies. I mean, it's the stories that our minds tell us. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Little I, nonsense, most of it. I'm really fascinated by that. Yeah. So what what presents as the problem is not always the problem, is it? No, no, no. No, you can't it's no and you know as a coach, you can't coach the problem. Um, you coach the person. So and you're looking for what is at the you know at the what's at the you know the core of this mm. what is spreading out like a ripple through time creating this, exp this person's experience of reality and then when you get to when you begin to alter that you know and i get texts every day from people it's really lovely saying i'm doing this now i'm doing that now mm. um there are two things that i do coach people on that a lot of people are quite surprised on by the way one is travel anxiety having had it myself Right. So I help people finally get on that plane, train, um, or get oh, back right. in the car. Yeah, because there's a real increase in women, bizarrely, um, who suddenly struggle to travel in cars, especially if they've got kids involved. Wow. Uh, coming really, like an, almost like an epidemic. And I think that's wow. due to women having a very high mental load and their nervous system is buckling. Mm. And of course, one of the symptoms of that is going to be a panic attack out of nowhere, and often that can be in a situation where they need to, to to be to concentrate and they can feel a little tense. And of course, oh, that is often in the car. Yeah. So helping wow. people travel again. And the other thing is bathroom anxiety. Bathroom anxiety. Okay. Not yeah. fear of yeah. bathrooms, but yeah. a fear of being in a place where they can't get to a bathroom easily. Right. Okay. That's really popular. Really popular. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm very interested to hear what you say. I mean, it's it's um most of my book sales are still in the States rather, in the, rather than in the UK. Mm. And I also find that it is much easier to persuade people. You know, when I look at the sort of offerings that people sell out there, there are a million people selling courses and things like, a lot A lot of it is how to sell courses. Courses yeah, on yeah, how yeah, to sell yeah. courses. Bombarded by those. Yeah. And that really meets a need for people, doesn't it? Because people are desperate mm. to make money, uh, make a career, a career for themselves, therefore they're willing to invest. And sometimes I think, especially with Brits, when it comes to persuading them to sign up for three or six months, it's harder than with Americans and all other nationalities, actually, especially other European nationalities mm. as well, just because we don't quantify that need as being quite so important. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I also think we have the NHS, for example. Mm. So I think in the States, they're used to investing in their health. Right. So I think that that's a small part of it. Mm. It's we kind of get it for free. And often when people find out what I charge, for example, they're like, what? Yeah. You know, but, you know, we are talking about they're happy to spend that on a weekend away. Yeah. Yeah. But on themselves is that's no 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 i wouldn't want to spend it on myself it's almost like they don't feel they deserve that and even though you can really uh, you know highlight what's it that you really want what is it that you really would be experiencing from our coaching together and th- what yeah. they and, and yes a lot of people are like oh that is exactly what i want and i'll work with you but there are people who are like oh yeah that would be absolutely incredible but they have a scarcity mindset around what they would spend on helping themselves. They don't invest in that at all. Um, they'll, go, they'll, they'll spend money on cheap and easy things. Um, and of course, I think you do get for what you pay for in those circumstances. Yeah. circumstances so, I think I've even got that oh, <laughs> still. And yet, when I think about the best therapists and coaches I've had, the, it's, it's worth more than virtually anything in my life. Well, yeah, how you, it's how we level up. Yeah, it's how we level up. I've got three coaches, so oh, yeah, you have a you, you yeah. Have you're, you're curious about that. Three coach Paul, I love that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't. I don't work at all. I just get coached all week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's I would never be where I am now, and this is going to be my most exciting year yet. I know that mm. in regards to me on on my mission to help as many people with their mindset as possible. So to do that, I have to level up. And I'm going to be limited in the way that I think with my mindset. Mm. People think that's often odd for a mindset coach to admit, but that's not. That's actually what a mindset coach should be saying because, Mm. yeah, it's being aware that we have room for growth. We all have room for growth. It's very limiting to believe that you're at the pinnacle and 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 should know everything. Yeah. So it's really important to have a coach in the area that you're, that you're, you know, that you need help in that will help level you up. If you want to achieve what you really want to achieve in life um, or find out what you really want, then you need someone to challenge you on it. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is that however good you are in life, you still need coaching to maintain that level as well. Yeah. And uh, I, my experience of that was when I went to Sky, worked at Sky as a presenter for 15 years, and we never got coached. The, the, for some reason, the bosses seemed to think we were the finished article, which we certainly were not. Yeah, yeah, we never got coached. We never, we never sat down. We never watched tapes. We never got told it unless we fucked up, and then we got. Told yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of my co-presenters, who I won't name, but was a very senior, very well presented, uh, respected presenter who'd been working for many years, developed this habit of going like this every time he every time he started talking, he would go. <laughs> it's a very odd habit, but I was too junior to tell him. Um, and none of the bosses were going to tell him as well. So I just, every time I watched him on TV, he would go and then he'd start talking. <laughs> if anyone can't see Tony right now, he's doing a very strange thing with his head. <laughs> yes. yeah. And I'm sort of tutting. It's odd. Uh, all right, well, we're almost out of time, but what is yep. one book that you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy and vitality? What's one book that I would recommend? Oh, I know so many. i tell you what, I think, do you know what? There is one book and it's, um, I think most people have heard of it, but uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Mm-hmm. I do not, I, it's just a reminder of two things. One is the power of your mindset, in, 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 even in the darkest of situations, but also the importance of connecting with a future self where uh, when you develop that relationship, you know, how you see your future will determine your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors today. And a lot of people have got quite an unhealthy relationship with their future self or can't see them at all. And I think that's quite an important reminder. So what was the other question you said? One tip for living with energy and vitality. Get your sleep sorted. Most people are terrible with this. It is the foundation of everything. If you, you know, my, I got on and gadgeted up, everything says go to bed. You know, I'm asleep by 10 at uh, 10 p.m., right? Yes. Uh, everything tells me to go and do exactly that. If they didn't, I probably would drift. So <laughs> I would say get some tech. Uh, speak to Tony about that. Yeah. You know, for recommendations, get some tech, uh, take some accountability and get your sleep sorted. The world feels incredible after that. Yeah. Yeah. 
even then it's hard, isn't it? Like I, my my ring tells me you go to bed at ten o'clock. I'm still faffing about at half past ten. Uh, no, I, I've, I've, I'm disciplined. I got my partner's like you're we're going to bed now, right now, and I'm like, oh, okay, brilliant. Yeah, really? so it's it, we got we got a team tag thing going on of making sure that we hit, make it happen. Superb. All right, Paul. Well, um, you're on Instagram. You got your website. Where can people find you? Yeah, uh, so at Mindset Change UK, you can find me on Instagram. The same on TikTok. Um, also, yeah, come and say hello. I also got a six-week uh, anxiety-free masterclass that you can all download and do the first week for free as well. Uh, you can all find that on my Instagram. There's a useful link page there. Awesome. And Paul, thank you. This has been cool. really brilliant. I've really enjoyed it. Let's do it again So Yeah, we'll do it again. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for listening. And remember, my podcast partners are Magnesium Breakthrough. They have been my partners for at least a couple of years. Easily the best magnesium supplement. I've had a bit of a panic in my house because I think we're running out. I think it's because my wife has been raiding my supply but that's all right. I will use the code Zestology10, just like everybody else. If you go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology, not only does that discount code work, but also they've got free gifts this month, definitely. They are subject to availability, so I know this is towards the end of the month. They might have gone, but I think it's a couple of travel bottles of magnesium breakthrough for free. So if you go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology, and wherever you are in the world, literally every country in the world you can get Bioptimizer's products. That might not be true, but I think it is. Use the code ZESTOLOGY10 wherever you are in the world and do make sure you try out the Magnesium Breakthrough if you haven't already. That is pretty much it for Zestology. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. I would love that. It's at Tony Wrighton. And one more thing before I go, my Change Makers program is up and running and underway. It's very, very exciting. If you go to tonywrighton.com slash changemakers, you'll find out all about it. It is my six month NLP transformation program. It is no exaggeration to say that this will be life-changing for you. It is about becoming a change maker in your own life and a change maker in other people's lives as well and getting to what I call level two proficiency in NLP as well. I was gonna teach like a sort of straight NLP practitioner course, but I sort of realized that I, what I wanted to do was really help people make massive life changes. I'm actually, don't wanna to brag too much here. I am lucky enough to have successfully made some big life changes over the last couple of years and it's been great I mean here I am in Portugal recording this podcast it's not necessarily e easy but sometimes you've got to get outside your comfort zone and the skills of NLP neuro-linguistic programming lend themselves absolutely perfectly to deep change in the areas of health work big life changes like moving to Portugal and relationships and family so if you're interested go to tonywrighton.com slash change makers i'm going to be totally upfront with you it is an investment it's not for everybody but we are underway and i'm really excited about it it's a supportive community you've got weekly sessions you've got daily access to me and we and your success is everything that is my metric of success okay so your transformation goals are how I will measure whether I've been successful by. If you go to tonywrighton.com slash changemakers, all the details is there. Ah, that's it. Thank you for listening. And I will see you. It's been a good couple of weeks on this podcast, hasn't it? What, what with Paul this week, we talked Bitcoin with Mark Austin last week. And I've got another belter coming up for you next week. He says, not actually knowing what's coming next week, but I know it's good. I've got quite a few podcasts in the can, including with meditation coach Niraj Naik, who is very well known and I've already recorded that podcast it, it might be him next week um, or it might be a personal update we'll see thanks for listening and I'll see you then